Hey guys, welcome back to House Church for our week two. Uh, I got to apologize because I noticed that, um, well, after the fact, that I chose to wear a shirt that pretty much makes me look like a floating head and arms. So you're going to have to look past that this week as we continue our conversation about what it means to not only be embraced by God, but empowered by the Spirit and employed by Christ. A couple announcements uh, just before we jump into this evening's message is... Um, you you've hopefully have got an email from me about our gathering back together. We are excited that the first week of House Church went great uh, and are looking forward to gathering back together. Uh, so we have uh, kind of moved up our Sunday morning gathering date. Uh, initially was July 12th for tent worship, but we want to do that sooner than later. And so we are going to start outdoor tent worship on June 28th. Uh, at 10 a.m. We're going to have one service on Sunday morning, outdoor. It's going to be an awesome, awesome time to be together again. What that kind of uh, change means is that we will not be doing our mid-sized worship sessions as previously planned. So we're just going to forego mid-sized worship sessions and move a little quicker into our outdoor tent worship experiences. So hopefully on the 28th, we will see you um, at 10 a.m. on Sunday morning to worship together as a church family. We also know that house church is supposed to continue, right? We're, we're not stopping house church. So we hope that you continue to connect. We grow with one another, learn together, and embrace house church for the foreseeable future because we really believe that the relationships that you're building right now are going to be critical to the future of our church. So I thank you for sacrificing time and energy and dedicating this space to be together, learn together, worship, and fellowship. Uh, so again, thank you for doing this and, and welcome to house church week two. I'll remind you that last week we talked about what it meant to be embraced by God, and we used the prodigal son story to remind ourselves that no matter who we are, no matter our circumstances, no matter our stuff, God's arms are wrapping around us, and there is nothing so beautiful and comforting than the embrace of God. It calls us, it inspires us, and it invites us to embrace him back. So hopefully through your conversation last week and as you continue to reflect on that reality uh, throughout the week, you are able to think about what it means to embrace God back. The second part of this series talks about being empowered by the Spirit, being empowered by the Holy Spirit. And we are reminded right at the beginning of Acts that you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. So we're going to talk about that in a minute. Next week we'll finish this particular series out talking about what it means to be employed by Christ, how we are Christ's ambassadors and God is making his appeal through us. So we have that to look forward to next week. But let's go ahead. Let's talk about what it means to be empowered by the Spirit. You know, last Sunday was our, well, the first, I guess two Sundays ago, um, was Pentecost Sunday, which is the Sunday in which we celebrate the birth of the church. It is after the ascension of Christ and the Holy Spirit comes upon the Christ followers, the disciples, the people there, and they are empowered by the Spirit to move out into the world and profess the truth of the good news of Jesus Christ with everyone they come into contact with, to live inspired and encouraged and loved and make sure everybody experiences that around them, that Pentecost Sunday is the beginning of what it means to be empowered by the Spirit. In Acts chapter 2, verses 3 and 4, we read, Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them, those who believe in Jesus Christ, the disciples, and everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit. It's one of those moments in Scripture that I wish I could be at. Uh, even, even just as a bystander, to be swept up in that moment of Pentecost, to be swept up in that moment in which the Holy Spirit makes his presence known 
in, a, in such a magnificent way, that fire, that tongue, being able to speak in a language unbeknownst to you prior is all the works of the Spirit that wells up inside of us as Christ followers when we believe in our heart, when we confess with our mouth, we receive the Holy Spirit. And with receiving the Holy Spirit, we are empowered. You see, when I think about what the Holy Spirit is, and sometimes talking about the Trinity is, is a confusing thing because we're trying to figure out how is it three persons in one? What is the role of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? And this series kind of talks a little bit about that. But when we think about the Holy Spirit, what I want you to recognize is that this is the engine that propels Christ followers forward in the world. This is the engine that propels Christ forward in the world. This is the power, right? This is, this is the, the movement. If you think about that moment in Pentecost, like we just described, the flames and the tongues of fire, it makes me think of combustion. And a combustion engine requires that moment, that spark, that flame to get it started and propel it forward. When we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit is that combustion. It is that engine. It is what propels us forward in the world to live and act as God's people, as Christ's followers. The problem is, more often than not, and maybe I'm speaking more about myself than others, we as Christians have a tendency to walk around the world with our check engine light on, right? I'm not a car guy. And whenever I use car illustrations, I'm sure I, I get more confused than ever before. Um, but if you've ever driven around and seen a light like this pop on, you know that something may not be right. But even though you may know that this engine, it, this light indicates something is not correct, this is one of the most ignored lights and indicators in our world, <laughs> that, that people drive around with this check engine light. Why? Well, because they can keep driving most of the time, right? They keep driving, they keep moving. This doesn't matter until their car no longer can get them from point A to point B. The problem with that is that this light indicates a problem. There's something wrong. And if we don't figure out what's wrong, then we find ourselves in trouble even more so. And so this light can happen for a lot of reasons when it comes to our car, but there are a lot of parallels when it comes to our spirit as well. This light happens due to neglect. You just don't take care of your car. In the same way, sometimes we just don't take care of our spirit, our relationship with God, the faith that pushes us and the spirit within us that propels us. We ignore what, what we need to do in the disciplines of faith in, in what it means to, to continue to learn and grow and mature. From a car, it could be as simple as neglecting to change your oil. In your life as a Christ follower, it could be as simple as neglecting your prayer time or studying Bible or gathering together as people of Christ or fill in the blank. Sometimes, in our own life with Christ, our check engine, our check your relationship with the Holy Spirit light comes on because of neglect. It also comes on because of contaminants. Sometimes contaminants or foreign objects get into our spirit from the world and it, it throws things off. And we get this check engine light that we just know something's not right and oftentimes we ignore it, but it's still indicating that something's wrong. Those contaminants in our relationship with Christ most often come in the form of sin. The way that the world has separated us from God, distracted us, and caused us to buy into its, its perspective or the world's desires. When we have contaminants in our spirit, we need to do what we can to flush our system to make sure that we are clean and focused on who God is calling us to be so that the Spirit may come upon us and empower us in ways that we can't possibly imagine. Another possibility, if the check engine and light it on, is this just a breakdown. <laughs> and I, I hope and pray you have never experienced this type of thing with your spirit, but at some point or another, most of us do. That breakdown, 
where it isn't a matter of we can keep going. It's a matter of things just stop. And lots of things can cause this, most often circumstances in the world or situations in our life in which we just break down and we are not moving forward. In all of these things, it is incumbent upon us to make sure that we do not neglect our spirit or we do not allow sin to contaminate our spirit or we stay in working order so that we don't experience breakdowns. But when this light does come on, it, it, it creates this important season in our life, the diagnostics, right? The, the diagnostic season is this time in which we realize whether it's a, a check engine light or it's this feeling that something is just off in our relationship with God. That diagnostics helps us understand what it means to connect better with the power of the Holy Spirit what it means to get our engine back revving at the level it needs to rev as a Christ follower, what it means to be encouraged and excited and propelled into the world by the Spirit of God, no different than they were on that day of Pentecost. And I'm going to give you a, a pretty simple way to go through diagnostics. In the book of Galatians, Paul, in chapter 5, verses 22 and 23 he talks about what we call the fruit of the Spirit. Now, the fruit of the Spirit is what comes out when, in a, through our relationship with the Spirit of God. What is birthed or what is grown out of our relationship with the Spirit of God. And so they are pretty clear indicators that things are going right or wrong based on whether or not you see them and experience them in your life and, quite frankly, in the life of others. But let's, let's keep it with ourselves right now. Let's own our relationship with the Holy Spirit. And let's just see what diagnostics look like in your own life with the Holy Spirit. Because the fruit of the Spirit are, are pretty well defined. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. My guess is this probably isn't the first time you've heard of these nine things and what it means to be a Christ follower. But because they are the fruit of the Spirit, they are directly connected with how the Holy Spirit comes into our lives. Are you filled with joy in your life? And I'm not talking about joy because you're happy. I'm talking about joy that extends beyond the circumstances of the world around you. This joy is an indicator that you are empowered by the Holy Spirit. How about being able to love your neighbor, love your enemy, Love your God and love yourself. If you are waffling or missing any aspect of what it means to honestly love one another, then maybe you aren't truly being empowered by the Spirit. What about patience? Should we skip that one? Yeah, I like to skip that one too. But nonetheless, it is an indicator. How quickly do we get riled up? How forcibly do we push our own agenda and our own mentality? Or are we willing to pause, to wait, and to be patient as we pray through the power of God and see it work in front of us? Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. We can skip that one too, right? Probably not. Oftentimes we push our own stuff without being controlled by the bounds and the power of the Spirit. But I want you to think through the fruit of the Spirit. Again, Galatians chapter 5, where Paul talks about each of these elements of what comes out of us when we are empowered by the Holy Spirit. When we are in a good relationship with the Holy Spirit, these are present. When, we're, when they're not present, then it's a good indicator that something's off. So I want to take a minute to talk about something else. As we go through this diagnostic process, I want to take a minute and talk about something that came to mind a few weeks ago. And it just so happens that our current climate in our community and in our world, this thing overlaps. Because one of the most powerful things about the Holy Spirit that I believe most specifically impacts our lives and the world around us is perspective. Perspective is one of the most powerful things that we can bring into any conversation, any relationship, and any walk with Christ. 
In fact, I was having this conversation with my oldest son, and it had nothing to do about the climate of the world or racial injustice or anything else as, as big as that. Really, it had to do with what it means to endure a relationship with a little brother and a little sister and, and what it means to not get so annoyed by every little thing that happens around him. I was talking to him about perspective and how it took me so long in life to think on this term, on these terms, on the terms of what it means to gain a little bit of perspective. To help us think through that, I want to share a couple scripture verses. The first comes from Colossians, that we are to set your mind, sorry, set your mind on the things that are above, not on things that are on this, on the earth. Set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth. See, in this mentality, our perspective isn't mean we ignore what's happening on the earth. It means that our focus and in our intent is on heaven. It's on things above. It's on the glory of God. It's on the power of the Spirit. It's on what it means to experience the love and grace of Christ in our lives. When we set our things, our eyes, and our mind on things above, that influences our perspective on the things in this world. When we set our mind on things on this earth, then that influences how we see the, the, the above, how we see heaven, how we see God's kingdom. And so perspective is all about starting from the right place. Our call as Christ's followers is to bring the kingdom of heaven down to earth. That's the prayer we pray in the Lord's Prayer, right? And in this particular case, what Paul is reminding us through Colossians is that we must first set our minds on the kingdom of heaven, on the things from above. So that the things from above influence how we see the world around us. When we miss that mark, we allow the things around us, our world, our traditions, our history, our politics, our fill in the blank. We allow those things to define and give us a perspective on the kingdom of heaven. And so what my prayer is, is that through perspective, through the empowering of the Holy Spirit, we are able to allow the kingdom of God to allow us to see the world versus the other way around. Another verse comes from Proverbs. There is a way that seems right to man, but it, its end is the way to death. And this scripture from the book of wisdom reminds us that we have a lot of ideas and a lot of focuses, things that we believe are right, directions that we want to go. But when we are so hell-bent on our own way, and yes, that word was intentional, but its end is the way to death. <laughs> when we are hell-bent on our own way, then it ends in, in death. But when we recognize God's way, the Spirit of God, the perspective of Christ, the fruit of the Spirit oozing out of us, all of these things about what it means to be empowered by the Spirit of God, then life is the result. And so we cannot allow our own wants and our own desires to take over God's desire in our life and in the world around us. It is incumbent upon us as Christ followers to seek after God, to be empowered by the Holy Spirit so that we continue to move forward, that this combustion engine, that this power propels us into the world to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. And we just wanted to give you some space to think about that in this week of House Church. Friends, there is nothing more dynamic on earth than the Holy Spirit. Too often we set it aside and we ignore it and we think of it as just one of those things that we cannot see. But more than any other aspect of the, Holy, of the Holy Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you may not always be able to see the Holy Spirit, but I promise you, you can feel the Holy Spirit. As a Christ follower, when you are in tune with the Holy Spirit and you are propelled out into the world to love to show patience and joy and kindness and goodness and all of the fruit that we previously mentioned. When you're able to have the perspective of the kingdom of God showing you how to see the world versus the world showing you how to see the kingdom of God, you are experiencing that power, the dynamic presence of the Holy Spirit. And so the question I leave with you this evening is are you ready and willing to let it empower you.
Are you ready and willing to let it empower you as a Christ follower to love, to learn, to grow, and to be all God has in store for you? Because when you allow the Holy Spirit to empower you, there is nothing in this world that will stop you. That's what we need in the church. That's what we need in our communities. That's what it means to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. Let me pray with you. Father, I thank you that we continue to get to gather as house churches, and I thank you for the time these individuals are spending talking, discussing, learning, and growing. I pray, God, that you continue to empower them and allow them to feel your presence. Allow them to feel what it means to be embraced by you and empowered by the Holy Spirit as they live out their faith day in and day out. May you bless them, may you protect them, and may you provide them in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, I hope you have a great time in house church and a fantastic discussion. I'll see you again soon. God bless.